It's February 29th. We've got a leap year. So which players are going to make the leap for Washington in 2024? You are Locked On Huskies, your daily podcast on the Washington Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back in to another edition of the Lockdown Huskies podcast. I'm Roman Tomashoff. That's not Lars Hansen. He's under the weather today. So I've got my good friend, Camber Michelle, with me. She writes for Huskies Wire, just like I do. This this is great. I, I love that we, got, that we got all this going on today. And we're going to have so much fun for you on this episode. But before we can get there, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So, Camber, we're going to have a lot of fun today. I am so excited to have you here and we're going to talk about players who we think are going to make the leap for Washington on this this wonderful leap year day. So, what do you got for me? Let's, I'll, I'll let you kick it off. Okay. Um. So, just... You know, because I've been entrenched in wide receivers since we've got all our guys going on with the NFL draft. And my first one's Denzel Boston. You know, he is, you know, I, you've got to love his speed, his size, everything going on. You know, that time that he spent, you know, behind our big three, the takers and learning from them. I just feel like in having that year with Shep and now Kevin Cummings coming in, I just feel like that local boy is going to be, he's, I truly believe, I think he's going to be wide receiver too in this next year for sure. So I, I absolutely agree with you. I wrote something a little bit about that over on, on Huskies wire where that's who I have as well, where I got, I got a couple of guys on the defensive side, but I I'm really excited about what Denzel Boston can do where you talked about it, right? The size, the speed, it's perfect. He does all those things. He's a really good route runner on the outside and spending two years with Jamarcus Shepard and having Ron McKeefer talk about him the other day saying, you know, there are a lot of freshmen who come in and they don't want to push, you know, the top guys because they say, all right, those guys are the measuring sticks. It shouldn't be me. But he said, no, he was pushing Rome, Jalen and Polk every single day in workouts, making sure that they were at their best because he's just as good of an athlete. And he's somebody where you look at him right now. He's listed at six foot four, two Oh seven. He's already doing a really good job of going up and being physical and making plays with his exceptional length. And he looks like he can still add an extra 10, 15 pounds to his frame and still perform at a really, really high level. And it's just, it's exciting to think about, especially when you pair him with a guy like Jeremiah Hunter, and then you have, Giles Jackson, who's an excellent route runner, can do a lot of stuff for you underneath as well. And all of a sudden, yeah, it's not going to be what Michael Penix had last year. But for Will Rogers, that's a really exciting trio of wide receivers. Yeah, I completely agree. And, you know, and I actually did go back and forth between saying him and Will Rogers, to tell you the truth. Okay. Um, I'm excited to see what Carroll can do with him in this offense. And it, I want to believe that he, we can see the Will Rogers that we saw with Mike Leach come in and, you know, change some things up. Right. I, so I, I like where you're going with that. Another guy that I, that I had that I wanted to mention is Drew as a party where, you know, I, I, I told you before the show, I'm making as many leap year jokes as I possibly can today. <laughs> uh, he, he's going to be making the leap from the G five level to the power five level. And now as we look at what was a Joe Moore award winning offensive line, they're, replacing everybody in that group. We'll see what happens with Landon Hatchett. We'll see what happens with guard Memelar, where he seems to be a little bit further along in his process where it doesn't look like either of those guys are going to be participating in spring ball. So right now, a lot is going to fall on Jereza party as the one guy with snap experience. Who's done a lot of good things. He was excellent with San Diego state. And now Will Rogers is going to need a good left tackle. And Jereza party is somebody who could really surprise some people this year as Washington moves into the big 10. I also, Cameron Davis, I, I went back and forth between Cameron Davis and jumping over to Jonah Coleman as we're jumping, sure. leaping, and all that. Uh, that's you get gonna it. Be a, this yeah. <laughs> this, it's, that's going to be a tandem that I think is just going to be so dangerous coming into this next year. Um, I was looking through a lot of the rosters, and I'm not sure if there's a one-two punch that could be quite like this one. There was a couple, but this this, this is solid. 
the one that I can think of is Quinshot Judkins and Travion Henderson at, at Ohio State, where that's right. that's probably going to be the measuring stick in terms of just all of college football this year. But Cameron Davis and Jonah Coleman is going to be a really solid duo as well. So let's jump over to the defensive side. And one guy who I wanted to make sure that I mentioned right off the bat is somebody I wrote about over on Huskies Wire, so you got to make sure you go check that out, is Lance Holtzclaw the sophomore edge rusher where he was really impressive throughout fall camp as a redshirt freshman. You saw the burst and, you know, there were still a couple of things that he himself was one of the first people that said, I need to work on. He said, I still need, I'm still learning the playbook. There's still certain things I need to do as I get bigger and faster and stronger. And now it feels like it's going to be full go for him where Steve Belichick is going to ask him to do a lot of different things, but he kind of fits really well into the mold of what Steve Belichick did with certain guys like Josh Uche in New England. And now he can bring some of that over to Mont Lake where Lance, I got to talk to Lance a little bit on, on Wednesday. And it's, it's something where he's just going to fit really well in that scheme. And when you go back and watch some film of Patriots, uh, just the Patriots playing defense over the last couple of seasons, you would see that he fits really well in that outside linebacker edge rusher type mold that they're going to want him to play in. I agree. I agree. I have, I had two and I'll, I'll talk about my, uh, first that's, one. This, this is great. Yeah. 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 So my first one's cam, um, him, cam for Vicky Lawton. Yeah. Coming back, I'm really excited to see what Belichick can do with him. Just because if you look back or at the current safeties that are there in New England, with Jabil Peppers and, and Kyle Duggars and what they've been able to do there with them, I just feel like this is a really good season for him. Um, you know, we saw him coming on and playing really well when he did come back from the injury last year. And I just – that support that I think he's going to give behind Bruner and Tupatala is, is going to be solid. So I like that. And it's, it's another thing that he just, he's really flexible where we've seen him play in the nickel. We've seen him play over the top. And that's something that's he's going to be asked to do a lot of in this, this defensive scheme. So I actually went back to another edge rusher with, with my other one. And it's Zach Durfee. I feel like that's the obvious one for a lot of people where we saw him get a little bit of run in the sugar bowl and in the national championship after We'll just say the NCAA happened and, and just leave it at that because that's its own show. But he's somebody who is really impressive physically. Ron McKeefree shouted him out when we spoke last week about somebody who's just one of the hardest workers in the room, just a really good athlete and everything. And now it's just a matter of seeing him put it all together on the football field where he's got all the tools and it looked like he was going to be a big time producer in 2023 until everything fell the way that it did. And now it seems like he's going to be really able to take his game to the next level as he's going to be relied upon a whole ton as a starter. Great, I agree. My other is um, the transfer from San Diego State, Brian Parham. I feel oh, San like Jose he, State. Yeah. Or San Jose State, right. Sorry. I have been <laughs> dealing with too there many too transfers and everything lately. It's <laughs> been too much. Uh, there there but, are way too many of them. Uh, yeah, there has been. And, you know, throw the NFL draft stuff going on right now, too. Oh, and, yeah. oh, it's all been a blur. Um, I love that. I feel like he's going to bring that really great depth into there. I've also, yeah. um, in one of the articles that I did write for the Husky Wire, you know, he's got some traits that could be that he's more like a Swiss Army knife and that we could yeah. see him flip between possibly being a safety and being there in the linebacker role. I, I like that a lot because that that is that that Jabril Peppers who you talked about a minute ago, where he's not necessarily as athletic as Jabril Peppers. Like that. We, we we can be honest about that. Right. But at the same point, there isn't a lot of support behind him. Where I really like Devin Bryant and Jordan Whitney. I know you do as well. And then you throw in Kamori House, but that's the rest of the linebacker room. And all those guys are true and redshirt freshmen. So you can't necessarily rely on them a whole ton to where I, I think that Devin Bryant is somebody who I should throw in as an honorable mention here before, before we move on, because he was excellent and he played a lot early on. And then the coaching staff said, no, we want to make sure we preserve your red shirt and use you more next season. But he's somebody who could surprise some people and really make a leap and, and join the rotation. And with that being said, let's, let's talk about some freshmen who might be able to do the same thing. Right after a message from our friends over at eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors does everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got 
you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with the eBay motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. All the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Like I said, I'm going to be making a lot of leap jokes today. And it's really great when we can do it in this fashion where Washington's summer program for freshman athletes before, before their first year is called leap. So with that being said, who is not going to have any trouble with leap? Maybe they'll be enrolling in the spring and might have a big role this fall. Who, who, who are a couple of guys you might've picked out for, for, for that segment of this? Um, so I have Charlie Crowell. Um, as my okay. first one, um, you know, uh, I, I, I do have to say, I, I, I do apologize. Charlie's dad reached out to us. I uh, knew every day or appreciate him. It's, it's Kroll now. So Kroll? we, we want to make sure okay. we make that right. Cause Lars and I did the same thing on yesterday's okay. show. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, I mean, the whole Ka Travis Kelsey thing and it's really Kelsey, yes. but they went by Kelsey. Okay. Yes. So Kroll. um, I have him, you know, we have a lack of depth at that position at currently. Sure. And, you know, him, his size, 6'5", 230, yeah, that's really great, you know, being as young as he is. And I see that, you know, that, you know, his weight can go up a little bit. Um, he was a really solid blocker from what I was looking at his tape from at Summit High School in Bend. Um, I'm really excited to see what Pow Pow can do with him and developing him. And, you know, we could have our next um, Kate Otten on our hands with him. I've been liking him to Will Disley, where he's he's a really oh, solid okay. walker. He does a lot of nice things with 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 that. But I actually went uh, with the other tight end. I went with Decker DeGraff, okay. where for similar reasons, where there's there's a big depth question mark at the position. And with Decker, I feel like he could be utilized in a similar similar role to what Hunter Bryant was as a true freshman, where Hunter wasn't necessarily. I think Decker's a better blocker than Hunter was coming out. But what, when I look at, at Decker, I see somebody who's really refined as a receiver right now. He's physical. He's really talented athletically. And he can run a lot of routes where you can split him out wide. You can do a whole lot of different things with him. But he's somebody you're going to be able to rely, uh, rely on. And then when you look at Jed Fish's just plan for playing freshman, getting guys in the room, getting guys on the field early, Decker just seems like the perfect mix of all of that. I like that one. My next one um, is Omar Khan. Okay. And oh, I, I like Omar Khan a lot. Yeah, yeah. Texas boy, you know, that 80 inch wingspan. And he just um, became the 6A champ in wrestling, went 42 and 0. And I just feel like th at that position, you know, having that wrestling background even elevates him higher. You know, he had some amazing stats, what it was eight and a half tackles, I think five sacks. And I just feel like, you know, he's going to slip in and we may have our new Levi or Thule in that situation with a little coaching. So I'm, I'm really curious to see how he turns out because he's the one holdover from the, the old staff's mm -hmm. recruiting class, the defensive line. And he was somebody who had a nice offer list coming out. And then yeah, he, 24 like, of them. Yeah. Real, real nice of them from all over the country too. So you, and you look at his film, you're absolutely right. The wrestling background is something that shows up right away. He's really tough to move. And I will say, I think that he might be a little bit more of a run stuffer to start. And then you kind of see how he progresses as a pass rusher moving on because that toughness, that wrestling background will show up in just kind of in those areas really quickly. And then you kind of progress from there and see what else goes on. Uh, one guy that I want to talk about is somebody who I'm not sure how big of a role he's going to play this year, but with everything it is that he does is I, I just think that Pocky Fina just has star written all over him personally, where he's, he looks like Troy Fautanu just on film from an athletic standpoint when Troy was coming out of Liberty a whole bunch of years ago because he's fast. He pulls really well. He, even though he's listed at 255, 260, he's really, really strong for his size. And as he continues to grow and and add weight, he's just going to get bigger and better where he's somebody who could play inside. He could play outside, can do a whole lot of different things. And when he decided to come back to Washington, that felt like a really big win for not only Jed Fish and his staff, but for this offensive line that is still looking for depth, like we just talked about with tight end. I like that one also. <laughs> <laughs> you, got any def you got any other defenders? Because I've, I've got a couple on the defensive side. 
No, go ahead. I think he was the one that really stood out to me as far as a, a freshman coming in. So for me, a, another another defender that I've got is Rashawn Clark, where we can look at the safety room where Paul Menke's there. Peyton Waters is there. We saw Vincent Holmes with the wide receiver. Tristan Dunn is somebody who probably also deserves an honorable mention uh, just from our first segment where he's somebody who has prototypical size. He, and as he continues to mature in the system, he's somebody who can also kind of be utilized in a lot of different roles. We saw him play nickel. We saw him play safety like Cameron Fabiculana did. But when I look at all these young safeties, I think that Rashawn Clark is the one who has the best opportunity to play and burn his red shirt early on where he's got the range. He's got the ball skills where he wanted to play wide receiver in college, but he kind of, seem to adapt to the fact that, yeah, uh, safety is probably going to be my best position moving forward. And that all shows up on his film. And when you just look at everything it is that he does, somebody is going to need to step up at that position. And from his skill set, it just seems like he's the one who I would probably bet on is getting the most time and probably adapting the fastest to the college level. So what what about the offensive side? Because this is this is a really exciting recruiting class on both sides of the ball. Who else do you got for us? Oh goodness, um, who did I? Oh, um, I flip back and forth between them, and they're both the quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't just okay. Uh, no, this I is really perfect. Yeah, I really couldn't decide. I mean, they both have different elements that they bring to the game, and yeah. you know, you've got the size of Davis versus. I think that strong arm that Damon Williams Jr. has. Mm -hmm. And so I really, like, I couldn't decide between them. But I think both of them, you know, given any chance, and I hopefully nothing happens to Will Rogers. I don't want anything to happen to him. But I think we do have two very strong candidates behind him. I, I definitely agree with you there. So let's let's spend a minute on each here because that's the joy of the show. That's what we can do. So Let's start with Demarcius Davis, where he's the holdover, uh, was somebody that Ryan Grubb identified really early on, obviously got a commitment from him in June, earns his fourth star right before signing day. And when you look at his film, he's really promising because he also has a really strong arm. You saw it develop from his junior year to his senior year in, in a really nice way. And he also just has that really nice size. You can see him putting on a whole lot of weight as... Right you know, 2024, 2025 come through, which is something you can also say about Damon Williams. And they both run really, really well, where when you look at Davis, he doesn't necessarily make the decision to tuck it and run as often as Damon might, but he's still a really effective runner when he does do so. But then on the other hand, I, I want to hand this off to you because it, it seems like you're a little bit higher on Damon, where his athleticism and everything that he can do just once he gets outside the pocket is absolutely electric. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I want to say that he probably is one of the most complete athletes that we have coming in, in that, this freshman class with his ability. Um, like you mentioned, um, he gets out of the pocket and he can be dangerous. And I, yeah. you know, I'm not going to compare him to Lamar Jackson or something like that, but you see some flashes that, you know, he, he can move that ball. Um, his feet move well. I, I just, yeah, I think I might be a little higher on him. <laughs> <laughs> Where this, this is going to be a tired comparison because of the size, but it's, it reminds me a lot of what Kyler Murray is where mm -hmm. the arm is really impressive. And you go back and you watch the film from the all American game, 181 yards, two touchdowns, adds 38 yards and rushing score where he was the best quarterback at the event. He did a really fantastic job in that game and he's got that same size. He's got that same arm talent. And it's something where, when, you know, we're, you and I were sitting here having this conversation a little over a month ago where it's all right. Well, if it's just the freshman, I think that I would be most comfortable with Demon Williams starting just with, you know, the way he would be able to thrive in these off structure scenarios, which is obviously never something you want to just plan on. But one thing that Jed fish talked about in his signing day press conference is, you know, when you have to be in that, and that kind of scenario, you want somebody who looks good doing it. And it's not a knock on Demarcius Davis where, you know, he's a little bit more in rhythm and does a little bit more, you know, just dropping back and going through his progressions. But demand is somebody who, when the play breaks down, he does a really good job of looking good and looking like he's still being very poised and knowing what needs to come next in terms of does he need to run? Does he see somebody open and just going through those, those, that decision-making process just really, really quickly. 
And with that being said, there's another leap that we need to talk about, and it's Washington making the leap to the Big Ten. Right after we send a message to our good friends over at FanDuel, because you can get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet Wins, you can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, ex- exclusive props, and more. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. Fanduel is an official sportsbook partner of the NBA. And, you know, I just have to keep reminding people that the Celtics just keep winning. And I know that this is a Seattle podcast and not everybody wants to hear me just dish my Boston propaganda all day long, but you got to bet on them to win the finals. They're, they're just, they're looking unstoppable right now. So Washington is making the move to the big 10 and there's going to be a big adjustment period. We saw Obviously, their one loss in the 2023 season come at the hands of a Big Ten team and the Michigan Wolverines, where the defense is really impressive. They did a lot of really nice things, and Michigan is on the schedule. Now, Penn State is on the schedule. Ohio State will be on the schedule in future years. But outside of that, I feel like Washington is going to be a a really great addition to the Big Ten, where you could see within a year or two, depending on how Jed Fish is able to build the system out, that this could be one of the the top five or six programs in the Big Ten every single season. Oh, I completely agree. And I also believe that us moving to the Big Ten is only going to strengthen our recruitment even even more at this point. Um, Not that Jed Fish is not killing it right now. I mean, he right. came out of the gates running and it seems like every single day I'm seeing, you know, somebody's getting reoffered or somebody's coming in. But um, that between that and the transfer portal, uh, I think the move to the Big Ten is huge, partially because, I mean, if you speak to people across the I'm in Texas. And if anybody yeah. here, Texas and East they don't even think the Pac-12 existed most of the time. <laughs> well, t- t- now it doesn't, RIP, but you know, right, you're, you're absolutely right. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but it was like, oh yeah, we don't stay up that late. Everything's already happened, you know. But having the, that big noon game, having the eyes of, you know, the entire country on us more being in the Big Ten, I think it's going to just do great things for us. Honestly, I thought you were about to say the eyes of Texas and that was uh, just been a... a, yeah. a, a... <laughs> I'm really from Washington. I only have so much Texan <laughs> this is good. This... me at this point. <laughs> so let's, we got some, some really great questions. Just kind of looking at Washington's schedule where this move to the big 10 should honestly work out really well for them. You go through the first five games. It's Weber state, Eastern Michigan, Washington state, Northwestern and Rutgers. That's your first five games of the season. And of the, of those, you know, there's the one neutral site game against Washington State, but the only true road game is going to Rutgers, which will be difficult. Going all the way across the country is not going to be easy. But you look at that, and then, of course, you're going to get later on. Then it's Michigan. Then you get Iowa. But you just look at the schedule as a whole, and it just, I, and it's not, I'm not comparing it to the Pac-12 by any means. If you look at Arizona, you know, Oregon, just some of the others teams that the Huskies had to play this season because USC, UCLA, Oregon are all going to be on this schedule moving forward. But it just feels like it is all going to stack up really well for the Huskies. And to your point, when you look at the recruiting aspect of all this, now being able to go into Michigan for, you know, when you look at the, the Parker brothers and how Javon has turned out really well, looks like Armand, somebody who might take a big step forward in 2024 as well. You just kind of look at it. You can say, all right, well now, Hey, we're going to be coming back to Michigan every single year to play one of these two teams, or we're going to be going to Ohio state or Illinois or Iowa, Nebraska, wherever it might be. And against some of these schools where, as, as you said, Washington doesn't necessarily have that same national reputation, making this move to the big 10 could put them into that same spotlight. I agree. Um, and you know, it's been funny because I've seen all these rankings of recruitment and, you know, who's right. the high on the list and we're never listed on there, and, but <laughs> we still made it to the national championship. So I, you know, I don't want to put a whole lot of strength, you know, strength into that versus what our coaches can do and turn these players into. Um, I'm really looking at that Michigan game, them coming yeah. into Washington, the rematch, but we need to remember Michigan lost a ton of players on top, you know, also along with all this. So 
I'm looking for that is going to be probably our biggest challenge into the season. That'll be the first game. That's a good point where that is going to be a really good measuring stick because both teams are replacing, as you said, so many guys where they have a record 18 guys going to the NFL combine this year. So we'll see how that all works out for, for both sides, but just looking at the future of the program, Obviously, we see Oregon recruiting at a really high level. Ohio State has won the offseason national championship. I know that just breaks the hearts of all the Oregon fans, uh, but they're doing such a good job. Penn State is starting to get desperate for some kind of playoff appearance and pushing forward. Michigan, they're happy. They got a national championship. But then you look at Nebraska, which has a nice long history. You look at Iowa, who's been consistently ranked if they figured out what to do on the offensive side of the ball. Honest, yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll get we'll get something going on there. But right there, and then that's not including USC. We'll see what UCLA can be with a nice financial backing. But you look at that right there, and that's going to be really, really tough. But the interesting thing about it, and I didn't even mention a Wisconsin, really, or, or Michigan State, yeah. where you can talk about all these schools and just say, yeah, Washington can stack up with all these teams when everything is going right. And looking at what Jed Fish wants Washington to be, it feels like everything is going to keep building in that direction for them. I agree. I agree. And you know, the one kind of wild card factor I think now is that Chip Kelly is there in Ohio state and yeah. we don't know what to expect. I mean, Chip's had some ups and downs depending on where he is and what he's been doing. So I, uh, I need to withhold some of my Chip Kelly thoughts just from, uh, especially his stint in the NFL. I was, I know, and especially you as a Cowboys fan, which, yeah. but I, before we get out of here, I think that one of the things that we really need to discuss is can this team really just find a way to, we got a, a really fantastic question as we put out our Wednesday show where somebody asked, Washington, can they make it into the top 25? And then beyond that, what are the chances of this team making it into the top 15? So I want to get your thoughts on that. And then, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. I definitely feel that things have come together. And as long as we can, that offensive line can come into fruition and um, Will Rogers can perform behind it. I do believe we can get into the top 25. Now the top 15 Looking at our schedule and the way that things are going, we, you know, and if everything's going in the right direction, we do have a chance. I'm not going to bet as much money on that as I would the top 25 <laughs> at this point, just because I'm being cautious at this point. You know, we, sure. we, we're we coming out of, you know, that's a monumental hole that we got put into it, you know, right after the national championship to climb out of. Um now, I do believe that the staff has been put together that can be able to do it. And these kids have got a lot of heart. So I, we've got a chance. So I'll, I'll put it this way, where Lars and I got some some pushback early on in the offseason where we said, this team could win eight, nine games. Like that, that seems like a realistic expectation. And we got a lot of pushback saying, oh, well, there's no this, there's no that. And things have fallen into place. Obviously, as you said, the offensive staff, Offensive line still needs to work itself out before we can just put a, a true, okay, this team, this is what the real ceiling on this could be. But let's say they start 5-0 and with the schedule that I, I presented a little while ago. That means to probably be ranked, you need to get to that 8-4, and 9-3 and mark at the end of the year. And if you can get to 9-3, and 10-2, and you would need to win, it, let's, let's say they get to 9-3. and You need to win four of these games. At home against Michigan, at Iowa, at Indiana, at home against USC, at Penn State, at home against UCLA, and then at Oregon, where I think there's a real chance that you could win four of those games. When especially you look at UCLA, Indiana, Iowa, and then you can pick one other one. Where, I mean, I would probably go with USC being the next best option there because I have a lot of questions about what they're doing. But I know they're building a really nice defense, but we'll see what the offense looks like. and. I think that it's possible. It, it certainly is. And if this team goes eight and four, nine and three, and it's first year in the big 10, especially considering everything that you have to take into account with DeBoer leaving for Alabama, how many guys left for the NFL draft. That's a really, really nice way to leap Washington into the big 10. I, I had to get one more in there. That's the last one. I promise. That was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Do you have, do you have any, any final thoughts for us? It's been just fantastic having you on here. 
No, and I, like I said, um, I like I've mentioned earlier, I'm just so proud of how this team has come together. That you know, yeah. it I I will be totally honest. I was complete in complete dismay after um, DeBoer left and what happened to our team after the national championship, and. I have a really great feeling and, you know, of course I'm always going to have my Husky pride, but to see the, the job that they've done, bringing players back in, kudos to the players that stayed with us and never wanted to leave. And I just feel like once again, we could build something special because, you know, we, we have always been being counted out, you know, we got disregarded and, you know, nobody thought, you know, we were always the underdog. And I think that we're going to take that energy and, we can create it all again. That You know, that was a perfect way to end it. So I just have to say thank you so much for coming on here. Lars, we hope you feel better. And to all our everydayers, thank you so much for tuning in. We really do appreciate your support. We've got so much more fun stuff coming for you this offseason. So make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcast. So that's YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music. We're there. We're everywhere. We're updating this channel with new content every single day. So please make sure you subscribe and click that little bell so you get a notification. Every time we post a new video, make sure you like the video. Leave us a comment down below if you're audio only. Please leave us a five-star review, as it all really does help the show out a lot. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will talk to you on Friday.